Welcome back to another episode of FRC Robotics 101. I'm Ming from FRC Team 6520 Green Arms Robotics Team. I guess this is the end of the journey for those of you who are following along with the series and also for the production process. This is the last piece of experience that we want to share with you and it's no longer about the production process but about what to actually do when it comes to the competition and what to do after that. When it comes to competition like VEX, Robocon, or any first competition, I believe that the performance on stage is arguably just as important as the production process and the contemplation after the matter is no doubt the whole meaning of the competition. So for anyone who wants to go to a competition like this, keep in mind that a good driver is as important as a good robot. The driver himself can make up to half the, of the team's success. And a good robot with a bad driver is no better than a bad robot with a good driver. I bet that if you've gone to one of these competitions, you've seen a fair share of robots that are bare bones but somehow move on further than you did. Our first year in FRC was 2017. We made a rack tack bot from only the kit of parts. The materials given to you for promotional purposes, but we did our best out of the three seasons because the drive practice time was so abundant since it literally took a week for the robot. The next two years, we tried to do more sophisticated designs and end up having no time to practice, leading to us crying on the stand while watching some wooden box on a drive base carrying games in the finals. The control is extremely taxing. The feeling of winning a match after some phenomenal maneuver can get you in good spirits. But a single loss or a failed maneuver can be affect your behavior for a whole day despite of the fact that you will get right back on stage in some occasions just 5 to 10 minutes later. For that reason alone, never let anyone who is insecure or bad or has a bad temper to hold the wheel. Let people who are generally more calm and collected, especially seniors, because they are more experienced with working under stressful conditions. Another thing to remember is that always have backup drivers that are close with your main driver, because the last thing anyone would want after a single loss is the, the place being taken by someone they don't really like. And Another major factor is the control setting of the robot. Customize the control setting to however the driver wants it. If you're assigned to help the driver with the control setting, don't show a bad attitude and say something like, use an Xbox controller because I'm so lazy or this mapping is more optimal. You shouldn't say things like that because you're not the one on the field so do whatever the drivers want you to do. I know this is not a good example, but this is the board we built for our drivers. It's a complicated board with a number of buttons similar to that of a controller. The drive system is a driving wheel, which is not much more convenient than a two analog, analog sticks, but we have to do whatever so he can perform well. Another thing to keep in mind is that during travel and in play, your robot has plenty of time to break down. Finding a few screws loose is not going to be the only problem you can face during the competition. It's quite common for parts to be bent, dented, broken in collision with other teams, the field, or even worse, your own teammates. So unless you're in America and can always resort to a home depot, it's kind of hopeless if you were to break something without bringing backups. So make sure to bring some spare parts, especially for extruding mechanisms because they are most likely to be damaged. Prepare also think and make sure to have them to make the parts first and have them ready for assembly. Prepare also things like a trolley for transporting the robot and tools around, a strategy guide for you to communicate with other teams, a scout format to look out for the ability of other teams. All of these are not apparent to new team and I'm sure that to whatever competition you join, there will be additions like these. So please reach out to more experienced teams to know what you need to prepare 
for the competition. Finally, you're at the end of it all, coming home with some bomb mass award. But it's not time for you to rest yet because this is not the end of your journey. Whatever you're doing is still just a student competition and there will be others taking after your steps and competing again next year. This is a time for you to cement your no the knowledge you've learned and help others who will soon follow you. This is time to make documentation like a technical binder if you haven't made one before. A tech binder is a recap of the thoughts and decision-making process of your team throughout the whole project. It's common to see something like the brainstorm ideas list, a recap of technical problems, a strategy guide, reasons for decisions, and so on. Making one of these can help your team a lot in spotting up problems and improve in the future. Sharing it can help others gain a footing when they're starting their own journey. As for us, this is, this is our part for the FRC community. Since the day we joined the community, we have received nothing but help. Our team was founded by two FRC team, 4590 and 4911. From competitions to outreach activities to finding sponsors, teams from all over the world have reached out to us. So now we are giving back all of you who are starting your own project as much help as we can so that one day you can do the same and inspire others. We are very thankful to be part of the FRC community, to be inspired by others, and to now have the chance to give the same help people gave us. This is the start of the journey for all of us trying our best to better ourselves and improve in the future. From 6520 Green Arms Robotics team, thanks for watching.